Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the model railway news for March. There have been quite a few interesting updates for this month, so settle down, relax and I hope you enjoy them. The first bit of news comes from Acuriscale, who have announced yet another new locomotive, sort of. Essentially, they've taken over the Hatton's Class 66 tooling and they're bringing the model back to the market. They've announced six new models which are due in stock sometime next year in a good variety of liveries as well. So this is what you've got to choose from. You've got the EWS, which looks good, the DB Cargo UK Green, DB Red, of course, GB Rail Freight Blue and Orange, and this very impressive looking DRS Blue. The prices start at £169.99, that's for the DCC Ready version of the model, and if you're interested in checking those out, I've got some affiliate links down in the description for you. By means of a series of spam emails to their existing customers, KR Models have announced a new model. It is this, a liquid iron torpedo wagon, which was actually used for transporting molten iron from the blast furnaces to the oxygen steel making plant. There is the option to get these models DCC fitted, which gives them the ability to reenact the 180 degree rotation of the container, which is very cool. Now, did I say spam emails? Well, yes I did. Over the course of around a week and a half, I received five different emails from KR Models about this, and they got increasingly ridiculous as they went along. Here's the first email, this one announced a new early bird offer for this model so that you could get it for £187 DCC fitted rather than £227. And they were really hammering home that this deal was only available for a limited time. A day later I received another email to check that I'd received the first one. And here it is, pretty much the same thing yet again. A couple of days later, I received another email to check whether I'd seen that one, and through the use of more patronising marketing lingo, they were further hammering home that the prices were going to shoot up after the deadline, telling me that I've got to act fast. A couple of days later, I received another email, and this one is where it really started to get ridiculous. So at the top of the email, there was a photo of someone's hand holding eight pounds worth of change, explaining that this was all I needed in order to claim the innovation of the year. They then went on to tell me what else I could buy for eight pounds at a supermarket for some reason, a box of frozen fish fingers, a bottle of washing machine liquid, or a small pack of chocolate cake. I, I, are they trying to do a rapido, trying to be funny? I don't know, but it's just making them look a little bit bizarre and out of touch. Yes, with their customers, but also with reality. Anyway, get this. They then went on to explain that these wagons cannot, in fact, be bought for £8, and they actually cost £187. They then say, that's less than £8 a day. But I don't understand the significance of the £8. They didn't explain that in the email. £8 a day, I went onto the website, I didn't see any option to claim this for £8. And working it out, it's £8 a day for around 23 days. So what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> they just never explained it. They then say this extraordinary offer expires on Wednesday, March 8th. And I'm serious as the onions you get at Tesco about my deadlines, so don't dilly daily. Daily. Yep, they can't spell or proofread either. Anyway, I had the suspicion at this point that this whole deadline business was probably just a load of rubbish. So I waited until two days after the deadline, Friday the 10th, to order mine, and sure enough, I was able to get it at the early bird price. So basically, the entire scheme is what we in the trade would call a lie. I have no idea what this is all about, but I do have some advice for KR models here. The two locos that I've tried from them so far have pretty much been a bodge. For the GT3, they had to send customers replacement front bogies because they got the first ones wrong, and still the front end detail does not fit together properly. And the Fell, well, mine barely worked at all on delivery, and there were plenty of other people who had the same problem. And if you look at the forums, there are several people who are quite unhappy with their model because they say it's inaccurate. So I would say this to KR models. If you spent a little bit less time on the spam emails with these fake deadlines and such, and a little bit more time on developing and perfecting your models, then perhaps people will want to buy them and you won't have to resort to wasting your time on these spammy and ludicrous emails. 
I honestly could not believe what I was reading, folks. Absolutely insane. The next announcement comes from a manufacturer that's not normally mentioned over here in the UK, but it comes from Marklin or Trix. And this is a locomotive that really seems to have divided opinion. Well, they've announced a brand new HO scale Flying Scotsman, and it really looks as though it's supposed to be a cut above the rest. It's got DCC sound, a smoke generator, cab lights, headlamps, independent tail lights, and tender passageway lights. And as you can see, there is a lot of detail on the locomotive as well. Now that's the good news. It sounds like an impressive model. The bad news is really the price, as you might expect. So this locomotive at the retailers comes in at £526.50, which is obviously an awful lot of money. Now, sure, that price is somewhat reflected in the features of the locomotive, but is this something people will be interested in, particularly here in the UK? Do you think the loco looks good? I'm not 100% convinced. The detail in places looks quite coarse. The copper pipework in particular looks very large and overstated. So I'm not really sure. What do you think? Will you be buying this? Obviously for us British modelers, this is HO scale and not double O. So it won't be in scale with anything else we've got. Are people really going to be investing over 500 pounds on this? I don't know. If you've got any thoughts on this, comment down below, and I will pop some affiliate links down there if you want to, but uh, I doubt that people are going to be that interested. But honestly, I've never seen this sort of thing before, so I couldn't tell you. What sort of layout is this going to run on? Uh, not double O ones, presumably. Yeah, very, very strange idea. Next up, I've got something a little bit different to talk about, but hopefully you'll agree that it's very important and worth a minute or two of your time. So this is Teddy. He is a three-year-old from West Sussex who loves trains. Sadly, he was recently diagnosed with high-risk neuroblastoma, which is a blood cancer, with a long-term survival rate of around 40 to 50%. He's had tons of gruelling treatment already, but the family is trying to raise funds for further treatment to try and help their son. So if you'd like to help out or learn a little bit more, I've popped a link to the fundraiser in the description. If you'd spare a second just to take a look, I'm sure the family would really appreciate it. All right, thank you for that. In their email newsletter, Rapido have addressed some of the production issues that there have been with some of their models recently. First of all, ESU have promised a fresh batch of decoders for their N-Scale Class 28s so that they can fix the faulty models. The problem has been looked into and ESU say that the problem only is affecting those N-Scale Class 28s, so if you've got any other ESU decoders, they're not expecting to have any problems with that. That includes the 16-inch Hunslets, which are DCC fitted, so apparently those are coming into stock now if they haven't already. They've also said that the ferry vans that have the incorrect numbers on them are having to be sent back to China in order to be corrected. So if you've pre-ordered one of the affected examples, that's these two, you will have to wait until those corrections have been done and they're back here in the UK before you'll get your models. They've also showed some progress on the production of the 15XX pannier tank. You can see here there's a big box of cabs which are ready for painting. And then you've got this photo which shows several details on sprues ready for cutting. This includes the smoke box doors, the cab backs and also the coal loads. And these have to be cut apparently, tidied, painted and then glued into place. The Jones Goods is now running at the point where they have a working prototype and here it is looking really really good, it seems to be running nicely and you can also see that gorgeous shine on the body too. I wonder if that's die cast, it looks like it could be. Great to see that model progressing, I was super excited when they announced it and to see that it's yet another big step closer to delivery is very very exciting. So looking out for those decorated samples next, fingers crossed it won't be too long. There have been a number of new models released quite recently. The first major one, I suppose, was the Sonic Models A5, which I thought was very impressive. The livery looks fantastic, it's a decent runner, and a reasonably good price on that one as well. You've also got the new Hornby TT Pullmans, which have come into stock with lights for the first time, and the lights themselves were really quite effective. If you'd like to see the review, check it out up there. There's also the new Hornby Tiger Pack, which might have had a few issues on accuracy, but it was still a lot of fun, and the Loco itself is a welcome change from Lion. 
Rapido have of course released their new VIX ferry vans which are absolutely awesome. If you haven't seen my video on that, that is well worth a look because they are super, super detailed. And more recently, Dapol have released their new Stroudley coaches in O scale. I have not received mine yet, but I'm expecting them any minute and they do look awesome. So really tons and tons of new models have arrived this month, which is very awesome. The Dune Valley Railway is an industrial heritage museum and railway in a beautiful setting in Scotland, but unfortunately they are in trouble. They've been told that the buildings they lease containing the ticket office, the gift shop, the toilets, the cafe and the museum, etc. are to be sold from under them. They do have the option to buy these buildings, but as you might expect, they are very expensive. So they need to raise £250,000 in order to buy these buildings, which of course is an awful lot of money for a small organisation. But if they don't do it, what are they going to do? They're going to lose those buildings. So they've launched a bit of a fundraiser, and if you'd like to help the railway, you can visit it and try to help them out. I'm sure they would be very grateful. For now though, that is all the news that I have. As always, if I've missed something that you think is important and deserves a mention, please do comment down below and I will consider it for next month. For now though, have a fantastic month, enjoy your modelling projects, whatever they may be, and I will see you very, very soon for another video. Alright, cheers folks, you take care.